so now we know what variables are and how do we create them so basically in the last video we have talked about how do we create a variable with the help of the data type and the value as well now what are the other options we have so we have worked with int right do we have other options so basically we have multiple data types to store your data so let's talk about the first thing which is uh, data type in fact there are two categories of data type which we can normally work with one is called primitive and the other one will be we'll keep it question mark okay at this point we are not just discussing about the second one the first one is primitive so basically in java we have a lot of inbuilt uh, data types available which you can use and they are primitive now primitive simply means it is simple basic to use to work with so whatever data you normally have normally we work with numbers we work with uh, point values Values. we work with characters we work with true or false now for that we have this that category so we can divide primitive into four categories here uh, the first way in, the first one is of type integers uh, the second one we have is float floating point value basically so we can say float and the third one is characters and the fourth one is your boolean of course when you divide this we have more categories to it but in general we have four we have integer float, character, and boolean. Now, when you say you want to store a range, a negative range to positive range, numbers, normal numbers, or natural numbers, you can say. In fact, we can we can call them as integer itself because we are starting with a negative value. So that goes into integer. Whenever you have point values, that goes into float value. Whenever you go with characters like A, B, or any regional characters you have all across the world, that goes into character. And then when it comes to true and false, we go with Boolean. Now inside integer itself, we have multiple subtypes to it. Uh, we have a concept of byte, we have short, we have int, and we have long. Uh, for float, we have another option, which is of double. And then of course we have float. And then char is characters are characters. So in, in characters, we can have different type of characters. In Boolean, uh, the only values we can have is true and false. Okay, uh, so example, if I go back to my code and if I want to create a different variable, this time let's say float. Uh, so I can just come back here, I can remove this section. And here I can say this, we are creating a float value. Now, how do we get a float value? So we can simply say float and then uh, we can have a value, let's say seven, or we, we name to it, right? Uh, so name we can have is marks, of course. We don't put in marks, but let's go with now marks. And then uh, we can go with a value. Now floating point values will be having a dot, right? So we can say 6.5, something like this. Uh, so float marks equal to 6.5. That makes sense, right? Okay, cool. Uh, in the same way, we have also mentioned we have subtypes to integer. We can have a byte format. But why do we need all these extra formats? For that, let's understand uh, some basic concept. Now basically when you talk about integers itself, so if you talk about integer, we have some sections to it. So integer will have different part. So integer will have different sizes. Example, if you want to store a normal number, so in general, we always go with int and int has its own value. Okay, so when you talk about int, the size of int is, is four bytes. So we can say 32 bits and then it has a range to it. And you can find the range on the screen. Uh, we also have a format which is, Let's say if you want to store a bigger value, a very big value. So in this case, I'm, I mean, of course, if a, value, if a value goes beyond that range, uh, we have to go for the long format. Now, long supports eight bytes. Now, of course, when you have more bytes, it will, it will occupy more values and it will have a range. So of course, you can find the range on the screen. Now, what if you want to store a smaller number? So of course, int provides you that range, but then what if you want to save memory? You don't want to go for int range. In that case, we can have a short value. Now short is only two bytes. So if you want to have a limited range, you can find the range on the screen. And then we have the next range, which is of byte. Now byte is only one byte. Okay, so eight bits. And whatever you want to store, you can store in that. Of course, it has its own range. Now, how do we calculate this range? So we do with the help of, uh, it goes from negative values, right? So it is minus two raised to eight, two plus two raised to eight minus one. Okay, so which is 2 raised to 8 is what? It is, oh, we're starting with negative value, right? So it is 2 raised to 7 and 2 raised to 7. And the range, is, so how do we calculate 2 raised to 7 is 128. So it starts from minus 20, 128 to plus 127. So 128 minus 1, 127. That's how you can calculate the range for all the other numbers. And you can, of course, you have seen that on the screen. So this is how we can use integer. So which one to use? So if you want to get a variable which, is a, which will have a value, let's say 5 or 6 or maximum 127, you can go for byte. Now, how do we get that variable? It's very simple. You use a type, which is byte. You specify a variable name, let's say num, and you assign a value, which is eight or any other value which you want. 
uh, of course that should be in a range and that's how you can store it now what if you want to have a float value now float actually gives you two different values or two different types now it depends upon which programming language you have worked with before example if you have ever worked with c we by default we have a value which is float so by default we have float there now float only takes four bytes and it has its own uh, values you can store and then we also have an option of double which takes eight bytes now what do you think which will be the default value think about it will it be float or double by default in java so default is actually double not float okay now why double is because see float are good when you have limited values when you have limited precision because after your point value example if you have a value which is 126.5678 or whatever values you have so float will have a limited precision set here but on the other hand double will have a longer one right so double can have more values so whenever you perform scientific calculations or any kind of calculation if you want it to make it fast and it would support maximum precision you can use double there right and by default java supports double so if you want to create a variable which is with double so you can simply say double and you can create a variable name num is equal to you can assign a value which is 5.6 or whatever value, value you want to assign but how about float now if you try that with float it will it may not work example if you say float and if you say a variable name which is num and equal to so when you try to assign 5.6 it will give you error it's because by default the moment you say point values it will be considered as uh, as double and if you want to say hey i don't want to work with double i want to work with float so explicitly you have to mention hey okay this is actually double value so you can this is actually a float value so you can put a f there right so 5.6 f that's how you define it's a float value for double you don't have to mention that now how about character so when you when you work with character and in other languages character will have a less bits but in java it goes for two bytes so in other languages like c you have only one byte it's because it normally occupies the integer range it normally occupies the character range ascii values but then in java we thought hey can we just have all the characters in the world not just english all the other languages so java actually follows something called unicode not ascii by default it will support unicode and it has two bytes which is 16 bits so it has a bigger range right so this is a range it normally works with so of course you can work with any type of values you have and any type of characters basically you have and if you want to define a character variable it's very simple you say char and then you specify the variable name let's say character or c equal to whatever character you want to assign let's say i want to assign a character which is k now in this case uh, in this case if you want to work with a character can we use double quotes now double quotes is for string right for character we have to use single quote and you have to put your character into single quote and remember it will only accept a single character and next we have of type boolean so if you want to work with boolean now boolean will only accept true or false okay no other there's no subtypes here only true or false now one thing you have to remember now in other languages it may represent it with the help of one and zero in java we don't do that so in java it does not it doesn't work with zero and one it is true and false so it's not like true is one and false is zero it's only true and false it is normally used for conditions if you are want to check for a condition based on that you will do something uh, that's why we can use true and false i mean think about computers when you say computer can think it's because of this true or false okay and how do we define a boolean variable so it's very simple you use a keyword called bull and then you mention a variable name let's say b is equal to you either assign true or false okay you don't have to put a, semi a single quote or double quote because they are itself keywords so these are the options we have now if you want to see this in a code it's very simple you can just go back here and say okay byte is done let's create some variables with different type so int we have already seen so we'll say num1 this is how you assign integer value but if you want to go with a byte so you can say byte b or we'll say by equal to now can i assign a value which is 129 you can see it will give you if i do that if i go back to my compiler compile you can see it will give you error it says possible lossy conversion from int to byte so this is int which is 129 it will if you try to save that in a byte it will not work but what if you say 127 that's the last value you can store compile okay there is a problem with result let me just remove this section and compile no issue okay so this is how you save byte value what if you want to st store short so you can say short sh equal to and uh, you can assign value which is let's say 558 any number doesn't matter and then what if you want to work with long so long l is equal to now when you work with long remember this thing after every number for long you have to put a 
L at the end to specify that's a long number. The thing we have done with float, we have to put F in the same way long needs L. And what if you can do here with float? So you can say float F is equal to 5.8. Okay, let's try with 5.8 and let's see what happens if you try to compile this. Compile. Okay, you can see it is giving you error. It says again, possible lossy conversion from double to float because by default, 5.8 is double. If you want to mention, hey, that's not double, that's float. You can put a F at the end, that should work. You can work with double as well. Double D is equal to 5.8, same value, but this time it is double. And then what else we can work with? We can work with character as well. So we can say char C is equal to, in single quote, you can mention a character K. Uh, then we can go for Boolean, which is boolean in this case and you can say b is equal to true simple stuff right uh, let's try to compile this of course we are not printing anything so you don't expect anything on the console compile or oh, there's an error it says cannot find symbol bull okay my bad it is boolean the only problem is uh, when you work with multiple languages at the same time you get confused somewhere so that that's boolean not bull so in the notes as well i need to change it so i will say this is boolean cool and now let's compile this once again, compile. Okay, there's no problem. And let's run this. Of course it will run, but then you will not see any output, right? No output because we're not printing anything. So yeah, that's about this. We have different type of uh, data types we can work with and all these are in build. Apart from this, we also, we also have some more data types which we'll see later. They're not type of primitive, but this is primitive data types and this is working. Okay, awesome. So now we know what, what variables are, what data types are, what a size or range of each data type here. And you don't have to buy hard them. You will get used to it. The more practice you do with these variables, you will get used to when to use what. But what if I remove that single quote there? Let's try compile and you can see we got an error. We can't even put double quotes there. It will give you error as well. And you can see you can't even put double quote. So you have to put single quote because that's, how you, that's what character represents. And the character can be numbered as well. So you can put a character here, which is eight, which is a character itself, right? Digital also character, no error. Cool. So yeah, that's it from this video.